Hello and welcome to part 2 of the tutorial for the various paint tools available in GIMP 2.8. In this tutorial I'll introduce the remaining 6 paint tools. Now if you remember these can all be found under tools and paint tools. In the previous video we looked at um, all of the ones from bucket fill down to ink and today we're going to look at the remaining ones. So we'll look at the clone, the heel, the perspective clone, the uh, blur and sharpen, the smudge and the dodge burn tools. If you'd like to learn the basics of the other paint tools, um, just please watch the previous tutorial and I went through all of that in quite a lot of detail before. So the first paint tool we'll look at is the clone tool and you can find this as I said by going through tools and then paint tools and selecting clone or you can choose the clone tool stamp from here um, in the toolbox. Uh, this tool is used to paint selected parts of an image into a new area. Uh, it's a pretty great tool for removing distractions from your images and painting over them with something consistent with the rest of the image. Um, but you need to be careful when you're using it. So in this example here, we've got a, a picture of me standing on a beach, uh, obviously a very sunny Melbourne day. And because it's been raining pretty heavily, I've got my, um, my reflection in the image. Now, there's nothing wrong with this, but I'm just um, using it as an example. So let's just say, for example, I want to remove this reflection um, of me standing on this wet beach. The way we use the clone tool is we, we select the clone tool first, then we find a piece of the image that I want to paint over the offending artifact. So by the artifact I just mean the bit I want to remove. So I can just take any other part of wet sand um, and then what I need to do is apply that area to the paintbrush or to the clone brush. So what I do for that is I hold down the control key and then I click the area I want and you'll see as I hold down the control key um, a little crosshair um, comes up so I just hold down control and then I click the area and as I move away from that you can see I now have um, two cursors almost there's the one I can control and there's one I've tied to this area um, of the screen now what I can do is use that area to paint over the artifact that I want to um, that I want to paint over but you have to watch the crosshair carefully because as you paint over the image the crosshair moves with you and the paint that's on your paintbrush changes accordingly to what it's now over um, so it's, this is really good because it means as you paint instead of having one solid color you actually pick up a much more natural um, realistic looking texture uh, which is similar to other parts of the image so I'll just show you that um, as I start to paint over this and it's literally just picking up parts of the beach and painting over it. So instead of having one flat kind of sandy grey colour, um, it really just paints over with something that looks like it could be the same thing. Now this isn't a perfect job. Um, on my monitor I can see there's actually, um, it's fairly obvious that I've painted over this, but that just gives you a, an idea of how this tool works. And obviously you probably saw when I released the uh, mouse button, the crosshair returns to its normal area. Uh, to its original position. Now one of the things you can do with the um, the clone tool is um, it allows you to select your clone source from other layers um, simply by selecting the other layer that you'd work on over here in your um, in your layer uh, dock. Now I don't have another layer to show this with at the moment but if I just quickly make one um, again, this isn't going to be something you would ever really want to do. Uh, I'll just choose a pattern and drag it on there, I think. And I'll just drag this underneath. Now, what I can do is I can actually tie my clone source to an area on this layer. And then when I click on this layer above, it now paints over it. Now, obviously, that is a fairly useless application, but that's just to give you an idea of and the clone source doesn't have to be from the image you can actually see. It can be the one um, sitting behind it if you uh, find a use for that. You can also um, sample, um, you can use, sorry just let me scroll down, um, you can actually change the source so that it actually treats um, composite images, so that's images with several layers as though they're one flat image. So if I was to have um, this picture of me as actually um, something that I've pasted onto this background of a beach, um, I can actually hit the sampled merge um, button 
and what that will do is it treats the whole the whole visible um, picture as though it's one layer um, so again if you if you do a lot of work with composite stuff being brought onto your image um, that's a very quick way of not having to actually select individual layers you can just um, hit sample merge and it will treat the whole image as, as though it's just one image and not a composite of several layers uh, another thing you can do is change the um, the alignment of the tool itself which is down here um, so basically there are four options there's none which is the default setting which is the one you just saw me use uh, and that's the one where you basically select a point and as you move the crosshair moves with you um, so that just basically just behaves that way uh, the other options all behave slightly differently so um, there's this next one aligned and this um, basically behaves exactly the same as the default setting does um, except when you remove the the button for the the crosshair um, so you say so you can select an area and it will remain fixed to begin with but as soon as I start to paint you'll notice that once I release the mouse button the the crosshair actually still continues to move and will do so until I reset it again um, so I'll just get rid of that little bit there and um, so this just follows you around a little bit more but essentially it's the same as none it just won't ping back um, registered works slightly differently again this time it, clap it attaches the clone tool to the source exactly and um, it makes no change on a single layer um, so I should probably just explain what that means so if I just press control and click um, when I start to draw around it actually follows the exact point I'm on so obviously this doesn't have any effect if you're only working on one layer but as before um, if I have one layer which is very different just quickly put that rain layer on again and I select that layer but then paint over the top and it lets me paint exactly the area from the, the layer underneath so these are pretty handy tools to use when you're working with lots of composite layers and then the final one is the fixed source and what the fixed alignment does is basically no matter where I move the um, the source stays tied to this um, the bottom left hand corner so it's, it actually gives us more of a solid block color and um, just based on the pattern that we've got there already um, which I've never actually found a useful so far but I'm sure somebody with more professional skills has a reason for using it uh, I won't describe the other um, options over here because basically these are the generic paintbrush options that are available for all of the other paintbrush tools I looked at in the last tutorial um, so that's the clone tool that's really um, the most complex of all the ones we're going to look at today um, so I should be able to rattle through the next ones um, pretty quickly so the next tool we're going to look at is very similar um, and it's called the healing tool now the healing tool in many ways is almost the same as the clone tool but it's much more sophisticated uh, instead of taking a carbon copy of the original source and painting it where it's instructed to it blends the source with some of the well it's either the light or the texture or the color uh, I'm not exactly sure how it does it but what it aims to do is make more of a subtle blend um, this makes it good for removing wrinkles or pimples um, from skin because the resulting clone is less noticeable um, so I'll just give you an example very quickly on my own handsome self so let's just say I wanted to remove this tiny little uh, mole that's on the underside of my arm there um, the same as the clone tool I can just press control and click to choose my source uh, I've set the alignment to none because that's how I prefer it to behave and then I can just paint over that very quickly and it gets rid of that and again similarly I've got a tiny little um, mole up here on my head so I'm just going to control click that and just just for very small subtle changes um, like that it's good for just you know removing small blemishes and um, in all other functions it works exactly the same way as the uh, the previous clone tool so once again you have these four options 
and there's the option for sample merged and all of the usual uh, brush dynamics and all of those sorts of things that we can rely on. Um, there's another fancy clone tool that we can use which is called the uh, perspective clone tool. Now I've got to say for the perspective clone tool I've never personally had a reason to use it um, but I'll show you the principle of the thing anyway. Um, essentially this does exactly what the clone tool does but it also allows you to clone something that's on an angle um, such that it gets further away. Uh, as it gets further away it gets smaller like a, a road vanishing off into the distance. So with this tool you have to do something a little bit different first to set it up. Um, we select the perspective tool um, icon over here and the first thing we need to do is modify perspective and what we have to do with modifying the perspective is actually draw a um, kind of a, a perspective box. We can basically drag these edges um, to set the perspective that we actually want. Now I find this a much easier job to do when you actually have something with straight lines to follow like the frame of this picture. Um, so basically I'm assuming that and um, the angle I took this picture on um, obviously as it gets further away it kind of vanishes off um, to the right side of the screen and it gets bigger as it goes to the left side of the screen. So once I've hit, I've modified my perspective, I've drawn this, this box, um, I then change to the perspective clone tool. I'll just make this a little tad bigger and what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to press control and click to select my source and this time I'm going to do this over here um, this is going to look pretty bad but you'll get the, the gist of it as I paint this on you'll see I can actually replicate this um, this picture that's in the frame I can just paint that in uh, this is the possibly the worst example of this you'll ever see um, but I'm only doing it for demonstration purposes. Um, oh, I shouldn't have quite gone that far. Uh, I should point out that's something you need to watch out for because the crosshair can cross over parts of the image. Uh, those parts of the image will pop up in places where you don't want them. Anyway, um, hopefully the thing you'll notice here is the way that this is kind of continuing to follow this perspective line. Um, and this image is slightly bigger than this image even though it's the same image. Um, I could probably show a similar, um, a probably better example if I was to use this part. So I just control click there. And this time if I do this over here, oh this is a terrible job. Um, but you can see how it's actually making a bigger version of it and um, following that perspective line. Um, so obviously the cloning of the, the colours here is awful. Um, but you can see the way it actually stays true to the the perspective so it gets much much closer to the screen and therefore much bigger here and whereas it kind of fades off into the distance as it goes further back again I apologize for not having a, a better demonstration of that tool but like I said I never personally use it but this is basically how it works um, another tool that's um, fairly basic or straightforward to use uh, I'll just get rid of the Actually, I'll just get onto it. Um, we then have the Blur Sharpen tool. Again, this is fairly basic. Um, it essentially allows you to selectively blur or sharpen um, an area by drawing freehand over it. Um, it's a little bit haphazard for my liking. Um, if you have any serious blurring or sharpening to do, you'd probably use the filters that we'll look at in a future tutorial. Um, but you might still find it useful on a small scale to make something stand out less um, or to pop if you want to sharpen it. Um, so you can switch between blur or sharpen in the options um, down here. So this is the convolve type. Um, so at the moment it's set to blur. Um, so if I just start to make my eyes a bit blurry, you can kind of see it looks like they've gone out of focus. Um, or I can set that to sharpen. And um, if I was to sharpen up the hair, um, it actually just becomes a little bit crisper. Uh, you might not notice with the resolution of the YouTube video um, but you can take my word for it that that is becoming sharper. Um, but as I said, there are filters um, such as the um, the blur filters and the um, the unsharp mask tool, which is much better at doing this. Um, and actually, you can use cloning techniques to bring that through in selective areas if that's what you want to do. But we'll look at some of those things in a future tutorial. Um, there's a 
shortcut for switching between blur and sharpen um, if you just want to press the control key while you're um, doing your painting or your, your blurring or sharpening it will switch between the two tools um, if you don't want to go over here and click it tells you here you can just press the control key for that um, but as I said it's not the best tool to use um, another tool that's um, pretty easy to use but has fairly limited use is this one the smudge tool um, now again this um, this is actually quite good at smoothing out textures but I find you have to really dial down the strength in the first place in the options um, so the strength can be set here the right um, so often when you see um, magazines that uh, have obviously photoshopped their, their models um, people often call that airbrushing um, and there is actually a tool um, for airbrushing but that's not the tool they often use um, one of the tools that's very good for this is um, actually the the smudge tool uh, it gives you that kind of airbrush to perfection look um, that a lot of magazines go for when they, they have a fashion shoot so what we can do is we can play with the levels on that and we can use the same tools you know you can kind of make it look like you two have flawless skin uh, but if you go too far it looks like you're made of plastic so what I tend to find is if you dial it down to about 20% uh, or you can just select this and type in 20 which is a bit quicker and then when you just make very small subtle adjustments to it it just starts to blur out um, the wrinkles that I have there on my forehead so we just do a very slight job of that and it just starts to smooth out a little bit and makes it look a little bit more like it was kind of shot in a studio with you know perfect lighting and uh, that kind of thing so if I just delete that a few steps you kind of see where we're up to um, and then I've got one that I did earlier just to kind of show you the before and after so there's the slightly wrinkly head and there's the kind of you know Barbie and Ken look um, so as I said with that it's good to just do small pieces at a time and really it helps to keep comparing it to your original image because um, when you do that you'll see if you've gone too far and the final one that we can look at is the dodge burn tool now this allows you to selectively lighten or darken parts of the image um, and again there are better ways of doing this um, with different filters or different techniques that you can use that we'll look at in other tutorials um, but essentially if you if you set it to dodge and then you start to paint over areas it gets selectively lighter and similarly if you hold down control um, you can make it darker so let's just you know make this bit over here darker just so you can see how that works um, or you can just kind of change your your dodge or your burn there so the only thing to remember is dodging makes you lighter and burning makes you darker which in my mind is kind of counterintuitive but we can forgive that so this is particularly if you wanted to do it on a very small scale um, you might find it useful for doing things like um, lightening the whites of someone's eyes just to kind of make them kind of a bit you know freakily kind of healthy looking um, or if you wanted to darken shadows and, and that kind of thing um, it's worth pointing out you can actually um, you have a couple of options for which which part of the image you um, lighten or darken um, so you can choose to affect only the highlights so only the lightest parts of the image only the mid-tones so the kind of grey areas in between or the shadows um, so it gives you a little bit more control over the areas that you work with um, but essentially those are the the uh, six I think remaining um, paint tools I hope you found this um, useful um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial thanks for watching